Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. Hey, Internet, and welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast, or should I say the Intoxicated Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and Typically Intoxicated is a show where I have my friends on and we have a couple drinks and we talk about life, but this time, guys, we're doing something a little different on Intoxicated. It is going to be an intoxicated episode. That's right, people. Marijuana is legal, and this is the first official hi episode of intoxicated so for this episode i invited my friend robin on robin is an old co-worker of mine who i've kept in touch with she's just a badass awesome person and loves to smoke weed so so she was the perfect guest for the first official hi episode of intoxicated and that's just what we did i did also have a glass of wine but for the most part we smoked And so the main theme for this episode is actually all about the concept of fake it till you make it. Robin is a mother of two. She works full time. She wears a lot of hats in life. And so what I was fascinated about is how she manages it all. So we had a great chat. We got to catch up. We played some games at the end there as well. Talked about all the different ways you can kind of get your shit together, um, whether that be through literally treating life like you're playing different roles. So you have your work role, you have your mom role, you have your friends role, sort of that idea of separating all the different roles in your life or something like, you know, bullet journaling. Robin blew my mind with the idea of bullet journaling during this episode. Maybe it's because I was high. I don't really know, but I walked away from it feeling very inspired to get my life together and get organized. So this was a great episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it and let me know if you want more intoxicated episodes because I will gladly do it. Big thank you to Robin for coming on. It was excellent. I'm not gonna lie. It's a different vibe than what I'm drinking. I did not realize until being put under sort of the pressure of recording an episode while high, just how low energy I am when I'm high, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's just very different for the show. So um, yeah, if you notice that I'm just kind of really chilled out in this episode, that's why. (laughs) Um, I'm much more used to drinking and that makes me realize how much of an alcoholic I am. So, wow. Wow. I'm going to keep this very quick, guys, because I'm currently up past my bedtime. I have a surgery tomorrow, which I've been stressed out and nervous about for days. Um, I'm just at a point where I just want to get it over with. I know I'm probably not going to sleep a wink. It's just really nerve wracking. I'm just not good with this type of thing. And I'm not looking forward to it. But by the time you hear this, it will be over and hopefully done with for a little while. I'm also just like chugging a lot of water because I was told to drink as much water as I can before midnight because after that, I cannot eat or drink anything. So there you go. So I'm going to be super quick with my housekeeping. We have a Patreon. Go check it out. It is patreon.com backslash intoxicated. Donate if you want to. That would be awesome. Another awesome thing you could do is make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, any app on Android or iOS, do make sure you are subscribed. You can leave a rating or review on iTunes if you like. That really helps the show out. And probably best of all, and this is the one that really matters, tell your friends about Intoxicated. It would be amazing to spread the word via the old-fashioned way, which is word of mouth. Um, Would super appreciate it if you are a fan of the show to tell a friend or many friends. Also, follow the podcast on social media that is facebook and instagram at intoxicated podcast and on twitter at in underscore intoxicated and you can shoot us an email with questions feedback comments you can you can really send us anything we will read it um if you want advice on anything that would be really cool no one ever asks me for advice so do you got any problems uh that you need advice on because i would love to try to answer them you can send that to intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com and that's about it i'm going to cut this off and get my ass to bed because i know i'm already up way too friggin late for a 5 a.m wake up call so i hope you guys enjoy this episode with robin also known as robin rage Oh, it's legal, bitches. I am so I am so excited. We are rolling on the first official 
episode of Intoxicated. Spark the shit, bitches. <laughs> Can you? Yeah, get the sound effect. Oh, yeah. Guys, I'm very, very excited because I'm here with my friend Robin. Yo. Welcome, Robin. Hello. And we are smoking the marijuana. Because guess what, guys? It's legal here in Canada and we ain't doing anything wrong. So we're going to do it. The true north. Strung in weed. <laughs> is fantastic um i have a question for you 42 what, what was your f- okay i mean we're just gonna we're just gonna say it to you straight weed's legal now but obviously a lot of us smoked it before it was legal <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was your first weed experience like my first weed experience i was probably like oh fuck. right now <laughs> <laughs> no <First time. laughs> yeah no i fucking smoked 15 minutes before i came here <laughs> Uh, she pre game She got. It's like when people pre drink to come on. Yeah, you, you I pre smoked. I, I I got pre stoned. I love it. Um, Prepared. No, I was probably like, fuck. People are gonna judge the shit out of this. I was probably like <laughs> fucking like eleven or twelve or oh, something that's like young. that. Yeah, yeah. With my friend Heather, who lived down the road from me, yeah, and her much older boyfriend, and uh, we smoked a, a big old banger and. She like chewed on my shoulder for a bit because she thought I was a tree because she was like really fucking strong. Whoa, that's real but, high. Yeah, she was real high. But I basically just like sat there and chilled. And that's basically what I do now. I just kind of sit and I fucking chill. It just chills you out. Like, I mean, I do it because it actually like, I mean, depending on the type of weed, I like sativas like like for the joint that I rolled for us is a sativa. But I actually I like it to just calm the hell down. I got kind of an overactive mind anyway, mm-hmm. so I find that weed is a good, it just kind of just takes me down a couple notches back on normal people level. <laughs> I find for me in some ways it helps me like sometimes like interact with the kids as fucking awful <laughs> as that sounds. Okay, funny story. I love one this. time. One time when Hunter was older or younger. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. She's in the future. She's really far ahead. Welcome to the future. <gasps> but oh no, um, Hunter was younger. He was probably like three. He was like little, little. Yeah. And uh, and I had smoked a big old banger and we were like crawling around on the floor pretending we were cats. That's and uh, he was just like, mom, I'm hungry. And I'm like, what do you want to eat, buddy? He's like, cat food. And I'm like, oh, no. uh, well, what do cats eat? And he looks me stone in the face and goes, bagels. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, let's go have some fucking bagels, buddy. <gasps> That's hilarious. Oh, my God. I've definitely had times where I've d- done that high without a child involved. And that's even more embarrassing. <laughs> Woohoo! intoxicated. I'm very proud of coming up with that. Intoxicated. That was excellent. As soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, that is so wonderful. Well, as people know, this is normally a drinking show, um, but you do like to smoke. I but do. Do you like to smoke more than you like to drink? Uh, well, considering me and my buddy polished off most of a 40 on Friday night, I would I would say that I do enjoy drinking. You, you, but depending on whatever circumstance time, you're in, you will do whatever it is. I mean, at the same time, I do smoke more than I drink, so. Okay, fair. That's fair. I feel like it's more of a, like, it's a good, <laughs> I don't know if I should say, like, it's a good everyday thing, but for me, like, I like it winding down the day to, like, help me sleep. It really helps me sleep. I fucking love doing it before bed. Straight up smoke every day. Oh, yeah. Drink, like, <laughs> maybe, maybe once a week kind of thing. That's but not bad. Definitely, definitely smoke on the daily. On the daily. And what, um, what was your experience... Have you gone to buy it from the stores? Have you seen it yet? I have not. My neighbor is just far too convenient. <laughs> and SLC needs to get on their delivery or yeah, something. Yeah, well, my, my yeah. neighbor, he there's no lines. Right. He's still, I can guarantee you that what we're smoking right now is better for $8 a gram than what you would get at the NSLC for $8 a gram. That is very, very true. And uh, his his customer service is really good. We just like <laughs> hang out in his living room, and he plays PlayStation Four games, and we talk about music. It's good times. There, it's better experience than. Well, I mean, listen, NSLC is doing good. 
I had a good experience when I went, but you're right. You still do have to go to the store and see other humans, it's put a, on pants. Exactly. Whereas if it's my neighbor, I can just be like, hey, man, I'm coming down in my pajamas. And he's like, yeah, whatever, man. I don't fucking yeah. care. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So tis tradition to start the show with a friendship origin story. <laughs> uh, She's laughing already. <laughs> Well, we're not going to name the place of employment, but we used nope. to work together. Yep. Yep, we did. Yeah. I still work there. You still work there? I do. I mean, I've gotten a promotion since then, but... Which is uh, awesome. Thank you. But uh, this one would have been, what, three years ago, thereabouts? Uh, Two or three? I think so. Did I meet you before or after I got knocked up? Um, Before. Okay. And he is almost three, so probably closer to four Because I think I remember you telling me that you were pregnant. Yes. Or, or maybe I dreamed that. Maybe. It was, you it, was it was around then. Like yeah, I got yeah. I got pregnant with him like March of whatever that year was, twenty fifteen. So yeah. So yeah, I would have been around then because I would have left. Yeah, no that yeah, I would have been there. I you been left there. while I was on mat leave. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, we worked together and yeah. I will say you left an impression on me because, and well, there's a couple of reasons you helped me a lot. That's you always remember the person who helps you out in a stressful new job. You know what I mean? Like when you're like a newbie and you're just like, I feel like I'm a dog driving a car all the time. <laughs> and that's what I felt like my entire time there. And you were very helpful. But I do remember like there were like, you know, it's we'll say it's like in the customer service realm yep. um, and it's stressful and you sometimes deal with really difficult people. And I think it was like the day after a really bad call that you left me a post-it note that just said like, you got this Wonder Woman. Or like, I don't remember what it said, but you left me a really nice note on my Something like that on, on, my, my, on my pig letter R fucking post-it notes. Yeah. And I was just like, that is so nice. And like that really like left an impression on me for whatever reason. Like I always, I still think about that because, and I almost want to like rob in someone else. Like, if I ever work in a job where I'm kind of higher up and then, like, someone new comes in, I want to, like, leave them post-it notes on their screen. Did my name just get used as a verb? Ro oh, we, I want to <laughs> rob in it. Fucking right. It means being really nice and knowledgeable and educative. I like it. <laughs> I actually still Can do we that. Get that in the dictionary now? <laughs> Urban dictionary. Oh, we could easily get it on Urban Dictionary. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think you can just, anyone can post on Urban Dictionary. That's pretty cool. I'm interested yeah. to see like what else Robin says though. <laughs> That's very true. But at the same time, like, I really don't want to know. <laughs> what? Did I can live in ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> what was your impression of me? In that environment. Because we never hung out outside of work. Not until my bachelorette party. Oh my god. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's so funny. That, that was a good time. Um, mm -hmm. So random and serendipitous. Yep. You always seem to be like, when you were actually talking to someone, mm -hmm. you had this ability to just be like, yes. This is the answer. Fuck you, bitches. Like really? you, you had this ability to like you. I, I feel like you could like make yourself sound confident, and then you'd be like, <laughs> "Just let me place you on hold for a quick second. So as I scramble to and figure then, out if I was actually right, right, and then you would put them on hold, and then that's when you would frantically turn around and be like, "Ah, uh, Robin." <laughs> Because we were like literally yes, cutting corner we from each other. So you could literally <laughs> just like turn around like 90 degrees. Yeah. And I was right there and you could be like, oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. it worked. You were very geographically close to me. And I think that that's what really did it. Because they don't encourage you to like get up and walk around too much in that job. But like. Not anymore. But you kind of look well. to your peers like in your immediate kind of cubicle area. And you're like, help, help, please help. Please God help. <laughs> I'm glad that actually goes interesting and in with kind of our theme because when we were discussing topics, you obviously confidence came up and I did do a confidence episode a while ago, 
But I, I, I would like to revisit the subject because it has plummeted since then. <laughs> In that episode, I was like, I'm so confident. I don't need a guy. And now I'm just, I'm kind of back to ground zero. So it, it would actually be good to revisit the subject. But you mentioned the fake it till you make it approach. Oh, yeah. That's like how confidence. I, that's how I live, man. So when did you start doing that? Uh, pretty much immediately, like as soon as I had kids. Oh, it started the kids thing. Because it's one of those like in a relationship, if you're not happy, you can just be like, I'm not fucking happy. And you can, like, you don't really have a whole lot of baggage kind of thing, right? Like, it's just, like, you and the person that you're with. But as soon as you have kids, then you have tiny little pieces of baggage. Oh. And you have to stay strong for them. That's actually, I never even really thought of it that way. That's interesting. Right? So, like, even when I feel like I'm falling apart, my kids can't know. Right. That I'm literally hanging on by a thread. Do you find, well, because you must be with them all the time. We should add, you have uh, two well, kids. Well, not, not so much anymore, not since I went back to work full time, but right. for like 18 months. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I, I was with, well, I, especially Dorian, like all the time. Holy crap. So you have two kids aged? Eight and just shy of three. Like his birthday's the end of January. Crazy. I know, right? Two kiddos. Sweet little boys. Yeah, they are absolutely adorable and very blonde. Very, very blonde with big blue eyes. According to my buddy Bigger, I'm going to have to. <laughs> He's like, you're going to have to get like a shotgun. He's like, because these guys are going to be beating away the puss. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, well, why would you say that? He's like, I'm just preparing you, bro. Wow. I'm just preparing you. That was a very intense truth, Brom. <laughs> Yeah, well, and he he does that to me all the time. This is the same one that sent me the the inappropriate chicken nugget picture. Oh yes, very one chicken nugget pictures that people who get offended easily might not appreciate. <laughs> yeah, probably not. As someone who likes to offend people, I appreciated it a lot. <laughs> You're on the right podcast. <laughs> Every now and then when the downloads drop, I'm like, who'd I piss off today? Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. But you do have two kids. So I do. How old were you when you had your first? Uh, I was barely 24. Holy crap, that's so young. Like, I know, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not that young. But, like, to me at 31, I'm just like, that is young to be having kids. Um. Yeah, I was barely 24. Like, I turned 24 at the beginning of... May and he was born the beginning of June. Holy crap. And then I was 29 when I had Dorian. 29, yeah. And what was pregnancy like? And please tell it to me straight because Hell. because listen, I've had a lot of friends on who've had kids. And a lot of them are I do think that they're being honest, but like I want the the unflattering honesty of what it's like to go through pregnancy. Because everyone's like, it's, you know, it sucks, but oh, it's so great. Life. No. Okay, let's no. get into it. No, you know what? Do you know what the best part about pregnancy was? Not being able to get pregnant? The fucking end. Like, when it was over. <laughs> like, like when they were born and I could be like, oh, sweet God. Yeah. Because, Is it because like- both times it was absolute hell. Like I had morning, Ooh. noon, and night sickness. Like literally pretty much from the minute of conception, I couldn't hold anything down. Like with Dorian, I was taking Diclectin before bed every fucking night. Like literally right up until the day I was induced. No way. It was insanity. And I started like really, really early on? Yeah, super early. And it, it like it paid through. Like I now have PTSD from tea because... <laughs> well because as much as i love my coffee now when i was pregnant with dorian the smell of coffee like i could not handle it like it was instantaneous holy shit it was awful i hear that all the time it was my worst yeah it was my worst food aversion like i could not handle the smell or taste of coffee 
Holy. Couldn't do it. Aww. But I needed to get my caffeine because my doctor was like, if you don't get an adequate amount of caffeine because of how much coffee you usually drink, oh. he's like, you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, my God. How much would you normally drink? Well, do you not recall my gigantic coffees? I drink an yeah. extra large. It's like a coffee the size of my forearm. Yeah, it's very big. But like, do you drink multiple cups a day? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. It just I drink, rots I drink, my stomach eventually. I drink like a pot of coffee a day easy. And I drink it black like my soul. <laughs> I never used to drink it black. It is good black. I actually quite enjoy. Right? Especially when it's not from Tim Hortons. Ugh, fuck that place. Listen, like, I'll get it if I have to. Nope. But fuck that place. Nope. No, not that great. I don't, I'm trying to remember. If, if the- I go to Tim Hortons, I'll get like a fucking mocha or like half coffee, half uh, hot chocolate or something like that, Ooh, like with nice. no whip kind of thing. Right. Because I can't handle their coffee on its own because it's just bitter and it tastes like a fucking ashtray. It. That's what everyone's, yeah, it's really not that good. I don't remember if the coffee at our place of work was, I'm trying to remember if that was uh, good or not. There's certain kinds that are better than others. They have improved the coffee I find. Oh, do have I? Yes, from like prior to... Pre baby versus like post baby. Find the 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 quality of the coffee has improved. That's good. That's very very fucking key. So with the first baby, what was the birth like? Did you have a difficult birth with uh, Hunter or like? Um, it, with Hunter it was quick. Both times it both times it was quick. Honestly. Ooh, that's you got lucky with that. Uh, kind of. Well, Hunter was actually admitted to the hospital before oh, I was. Shit. What do you mean? Well, they told me they were like, "No, you're not dilating fast enough." Okay. So uh, we're not going to admit you. Well, then my water broke, and 23 minutes later, I had a baby on my chest. Holy shit! And during that time, he uh, he went into distress. So every time I would contract, his heart rate would drop. So they ended up busting up the vacuum assist. Ah! So I was pushing and they were pulling, but the half an epidural that I got, because I got half an epidural. What the like, heck? Why? Only half? Well. I have so many questions. And also, I just want to say, <clears throat> learning about pregnancy and birth when you're high is much better when you're than when you're not high. Yeah. I am. I feel much more prepared to deal with the details that I'm about to hear. Yeah. Okay. So. When I say I got half an epidural, I mean, I was just like, I initially went in there being like, no, I want a drug free birth. Oh, no. I was like, it's going to be a beautiful thing. And then I got in there and I was like, give me the drugs. (laughs) I don't blame you at all. So they finally got me the drugs. And then so they, they get the needle in my back and everything like that. They give me the initial shot to kind of like numb me Ugh. or whatever and then before they hook me up to the drip they're like oh we're gonna check your cervix oh hey look you're 10 centimeters dilated time to push oh my so God. that's the story of how robin got half an epidural half an epidural half an epidural and it worked too well so i couldn't feel when i was contracting so they had to tell me when i was contracting so i would know when to push and they could tell because they were like monitoring that well they, they were like had their hands on my belly oh. kind of thing, so they could feel it contracting crazy so they're telling me when my belly is contracting i'm then pushing they're hauling his shoulder got stuck on the way out i ended up with 15 stitches oh because you tore yeah oh yeah Uh, i'm very so our mother's day episode we had i had two my friends on Uh and yeah they talked about that whole thing and i'm still mortified by that that yeah not good man it sucked like more dick than a porn star (laughs) <laughs> I had to think about that for a split second. The split and second? We were talking before the mics came on about like the recovery process because like <sighs> Seriously, they should I'm about put to it- have a surgery where like my vagina is going to be out of service for a solid month, but I can't imagine A pushing a baby out and B having stitches down there. Like what that recovery is like. That must be It was not pleasant. Not pleasant. How long did it take? Do you remember? Uh, probably like 
a solid two weeks before it stopped burning a little bit when I peed. Oh my god! Trust me when I say if they if they don't give you one of these Perry bottles, I still have one or two left, and I will totally hook you up. If they give you one of these like little spray bottles, they're not really like a spray bottle, but it's like a little bottle. It's probably about like this big around, probably about this high. It's got like a little nozzle on it, almost like a like dish soap kind of. Oh wow! Okay, and they will give. They may give you that to like rinse your cooter with, kind of like a bidet. Love the bottle. The <laughs> bottle is your friend. <laughs> Trust me when I say. I feel like my friend Sandra said something similar on the episode. Trust me, like seriously, yeah, like after like squeezing two humans out of my vagina. Yeah, I can honestly. The bottle is your best friend. Like the when I when I had best friend when I had Dorian, I like managed to like con them into giving me an extra bottle because I had two bathrooms in my apartment, so I wanted to have one in each bathroom, so, so I would always like, be prepared. It's just like soap, or like no, just like warm water right like instead of wiping because you're obviously tender and things like that so you uh, use it almost like a bidet kind of thing oh right okay 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 got you I so got you use you. warm water it's kind of nice personally i found warm water and then like uh like a baby face cloth to like pat dry afterwards oh my gosh love this love i'm trying to think if i know any pregnant ladies right now who might be last name Seriously, go to Walmart and pick yourself up a pack of baby face cloths. They are useful for fucking everything. everything. Including, like, maybe some fresh wipes for your lady bits. Yeah, man. Like, if you want to just freshen up before mm-hmm. sexy times. Yeah, man. <laughs> totally. Baby face cloths rule all. They rule supreme. Like, I, I use them for Kleenex at home. I use them for, like, baby wipes for, like, what cleaning Dorian's ass. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like... These are separate stacks of white, like, cloths, obviously. Right. Absolutely. Clearly. Yeah, throw like, them out when you're done. <laughs> no, I wash them with the diapers if they get used as the ass cloth kind oh. of thing. My God. Yeah, man. I'm all about being eco-friendly. <laughs> like, I rock a diva cup and a cloth oh liner. Oh, my God. Okay, I have a thousand questions about diva cups. I, it's in right now. Okay, I have one in my room. I've never used it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say that there's like a steep learning curve. That's what I've heard. Like the like the first cycle at the very least, you're gonna be doing this and you're gonna be like, oh my god, someone died in here. Uh, oh no. <laughs> hey man, you said you wanted honesty. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I do wanna hear. It, you like smush it up in there and then it like yeah, and okay, so you smush it up in there, and then you gotta like spin it, make sure that it's like suctioned in there, so that it's like open, like a flower, proverbially. <laughs> oh my god, I did not say that right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you said, but I can't wait to hear it back when I edit. <gasps> Fuck. I get uh, like a flower. Yeah, I know. I know what you meant. Yeah, right. Oddly enough, I did. The word doesn't exist, but I I knew what you meant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, oh it's officially God. intoxicated from here on out. No more <sighs> drinking, just smoking. <laughs> la, la, la. I've always been so curious about them because you're right. It does feel like a very <laughs> steep learning curve, <clears throat> right? But. Okay. It's one of those things that like once you get it, it just like it clicks. Okay. Like, okay, do you remember at work? Mm-hmm. There was that one like evil system that was like outside the system mm-hmm. that they would use at like pharmacies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that evil system. Mm-hmm. Do you remember like that was like the worst thing ever? It was a really steep learning curve. But then once you got it. Yeah. It yeah. like once it clicked. Right. You like understood how everything worked and it was kind of like a oh, light bulb moment. moment. Exactly. That's exactly what it is like. Interesting. What are the benefits to Well, I mean, obviously, like you're not putting a bleached thing of paper up there. Okay. Uh, case in point. I just purchased one. Hold on. Um, ooh, ooh. Oh, money? Cheaper? Uh, yeah, for sure. How, oh, interesting. How much do you spend on average? Oh, God. For, uh, for your... Ooh lady your sanitary products probably like 10 bucks a month maybe okay 
Or actually, I don't know how much are tampons. I don't freaking know. I have no idea. But I spent thirty seven ninety nine mm-hmm. on a diva cup, mm-hmm. and that thirty seven ninety nine will last me a year. It lasts a whole year. A whole year, legit. You can clean it and like just reuse it. Well, yeah, that's kind of the fucking point, man. <laughs> Well, I didn't think it would be for a whole year. I thought maybe yeah, man, no. Like, I thought maybe you could, like you could get like couple, like three or four months out of it. But like, no, no, whole year. Really? Whole year. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah, ma'am. And then I personally, the same company that does those fancy diapers that Dorian wears, like the ones with the poly tail, mm-hmm. they also do like they call it mama cloth, but it's like cloth lady pads, and I get pretty liners. From them that I pair with my Diva Cup just in case. Because sometimes I've noticed post baby since I got my IUD, my period's a lot heavier. Uh, so sometimes... That's, I have heard that they could leak too. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't happen very often, but I like to have like a backup just in case. And it just so happens that these are really pretty. So, And you like have to empty the cup out too. Yes. Right? Every tw- twice Blech. a day. Twice a day. And it's literally once you get the hang of it, it's literally like you pull and dump at the <laughs> I same wish time. People could see what's that? What that, that wow, I've seen a lot on the show. That's got okay. So yeah, you 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 dump as soon as it's out. Yes, exactly. It's okay. like one fluid motion. You pull and dump simultaneously. Like it's all in the wrist. <laughs> I really want to post that clip out of context, like completely out of context. People will be like, what the fuck? Wow. I should really try it. Seriously. I'm I'm now quite curious. Right? And think about it. Okay. So first of all, savings. Because I mean, if you spend $10 a month. Mm, I won't even maybe say lower than that. But yeah, that over a span of a year. Yeah. Right? So think about that. I just spent thirty seven ninety nine, and I ordered it on a well. And because it was over $35, I got free shipping. Bam. Bam. But you can get them at any drugstore too, right? Not any drugstore. Not all of them have them. It's like only certain ones. I'm pretty sure like the Lawton's at Mumford has them or something like that. So right. I mean like that's. And IUD. What's, what's that like? Because I've heard absolute horror stories from people. See, I have like the good old fashioned copper tea, like kicking it old school because. Okay. What's the copper one? It, I always get so confused with the different IUDs. Okay. So there's essentially three different kinds mm-hmm. there is Mirena. Right. There is another one that the name fucking escapes me. And those two, they're the ones that have like the commercials and stuff like that. Those both are like little plastic, like poly ones and they have hormones in them right whereas the copper t ones they're made out of copper so like literally the material that it's made out of basically makes your uterus an inhospitable environment oh i like that better that's more epic right i basically like (laughs) have made my uterus a hazard zone it's a battle scene from game of thrones pretty much a blood (laughs) it's like the red wedding in there at all times (laughs) We had to bring up Game of Thrones at some point. Of course. Because you're a big fan. That was one thing we talked uh, talked about a lot at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the time. All the time. That show. I feel like I've been waiting forever for it to come back. It's insane. I know. And it's coming back in like April. So I'm like, maybe there'll be like a birthday episode. Because <laughs> my birthday's the beginning of May. It's like May 1st. Oh, so. wow. Okay. Are you Taurus? I am a Taurus. Oh, yeah. I found out that my rising sign is a Taurus. Which means that that's how I am to the world. Like, that's how I act. Is I act like a Taurus, even though I'm a Pisces. I am what the astrology world calls a roaring Taurus. Ah, I can see I, that. Uh, I display all of the, basically all of like the, like the, the telltale Taurus signs. That's like me through and through. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm stubborn to a fucking fault. See, and that was the main thing that when I found out that my rising sign was Taurus, all my friends were like, that makes sense. You're very stubborn. And I never thought I was stubborn until I really thought about it. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty stubborn. That can be good sometimes, though. Yeah, I'm really stubborn. I'm like a dog with a bone sometimes. It can mean that you can get stuff done really well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an advantage to it. There are all kinds of advantages to being a Taurus. You're stubborn. 
You're feisty. Mm-hmm. But you're also tender and loving. See, Apparently, Tauruses are also the best people in bed. Really? That's what well, I've Well, that heard. makes me feel better. I mean, I haven't had any complaints, so. <laughs> Do you guys would complain, though? I don't that's know. That's my question. Like, that's what I always wonder about, like, when people think that they're good in bed. No, like, see, I ha- I do have a couple of guy friends that like have straight up like told girls like, no, you're you're not very good in bed. Like my cousin's husband, uh-huh. one time he straight up like opened up a porno on this girl's back because she just wasn't doing it for him. No, she not on her back, like a magazine. Yeah, like He's he was like he was doing her from behind, and he just like grabbed a porno mag and like flipped it open on her I, back. <laughs> you would notice that. Yep, she did, and she was not pleased. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to know any guys listening. Like, do you tell them or do you not tell them? That's why I'm very curious with that. But I also think the problem is on the other side as well. Like, I feel like maybe just uh, like humans as people like aren't as honest as they should be. No. Well, see, I can't really speak for other ladies, but Mm. I feel like if it's not good for me, he knows. (laughs) You don't fake. No, <laughs> no, because so you, fake it, you fake it till you make it in other areas of life, but not this one. Well, ob- OK, yeah, see, I can I can <laughs> I can fake it till I make it in so far as like making it seem as though I have my shit together for the world. Like, you know, right. like from the mom perspective, but from like a sexy times perspective, it's like, why well, fake it? The only time I'm the only person I'm like, who's losing out by that is me. I ain't faking shit. I, yeah, it's hard to sometimes too. Like, yeah. I'm not a good actress. I mean, like all parents are like Oscar worthy actors <laughs> and actresses. <laughs> we we hold our shit together when when times get tough and everything like that. But I mean, I mean, I I could fake it. I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure I could. You I, know, fake it like a '90s porn star kind of thing. Um, yeah, if you were just told to just yeah, but I think it's good that you don't. Because then guys know. Exactly. They it's shouldn't be, like, they shouldn't think they're doing a good job when they're not. Exactly. Like, I'm not going to pet your ego, no, honey. No, hell no. If you oh, don't, I if, if, the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, the bell is for, like, when someone makes a good point. Oh. Or, or it's like a, like, yeah, it's like a yes bell. Or, like, a burn. Okay. So, like. like I didn't know a, we were keeping a, track of those. A have to- Oh, there's never a score. Some episodes I lose track. But excellent. But the bell is there if you want to dig it. I'm gonna spark another one. Spark another one. I want to know more about IUDs though. Do they, do they fucking hurt? Um, when I got it in, it wasn't like a super pleasant experience. I'm not. I'm yeah. not gonna lie and be like, oh, it was all like kittens and rainbows. Yeah, no, everyone says that. It was. It was a little uncomfortable, but it was like literally just like it was like a pinch, like a sharp uh, pinch. Yeah, and then it was over with. That's I mean, and I kind of had like some cramping for a couple of days, but that was that was it. And the the only thing that I really notice is uh, I get worse cramps with my period, <gasps> and my period is heavier. Yeah, that's what than I it was before. Whereas the people who are on the uh, Mar- I want to fucking the- Google this shit. Marina or Marin? Hey Google, mm-hmm. what are the names of the IUDs with uh, drug identification numbers? Google's never as Kylina, helpful. Kylina, that's the other one. Alina? Kylina. Kylina. K Y L E E N A. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, so Morena and Kylina, those are the two that have drug identification numbers. So those can go <laughs> those can go through your drug plans, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like those two <laughs> chicks would be friends in high school. <laughs> Morena and Kylina. I, like, I I don't know what what would they look like? Okay, Kylina <laughs> definitely has like Princess Leia buns. I but like like high up Princess Leia buns. Okay. I almost pictured like a Kylie Jenner. Oh, maybe. Like definitely brunette for Kylina. Mm-hmm. I think Marina might be a blonde. Or like a strawberry blonde. Yeah. Blue eyes. She might have a tinge of the ginge. <laughs> a tinge of <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic. And I I love me some gingers. I mean, my husband is a ginger. Yeah, you like the gingers. I do. And you like what's his what's the ginger from Game of Thrones? What's his name again? The guy who liked Bri um Oh, Tormund Giant Spain. Tormund! Actually, he and my husband look like crazy alike. I can see that. It's it's really funny. And actually, his hair is longer than mine is right now. 
No way. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could deal with that. It's How do you feel annoying. about that? I'm okay with it, honestly. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm actually getting my hair cut like next week. Ooh. I'm getting all of the lightener cut out of my hair because I don't know if you can tell this or not, but this is mostly my natural hair yeah. color for like the first time ever. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to like blow your mind. Hold on. I didn't yeah. even light this yet. I'm so fucking distracted. Okay. Like a light, 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 like, really light brown. Yeah, like so yeah. basically that's all my natural color. So I'm going to get all this lightener from the, the ends cut out and we'll see what I have left other than a fucking mullet. And, and then uh, what would your plan be going forward for color? Uh, I'm going to leave it au naturel. Ooh, do it, do it, do it. Why not? It's good color. It's not bad. Yeah, I remember when nice. I was younger, I was like, oh, that's like the worst color ever. As long as people don't call me a fucking dirty blonde. I will not have to cut any bitches. You're like, I'm not a goddamn beer. No, like, <laughs> no. Anytime I was younger and anyone called my hair, that's actually why I started coloring my hair in the first place when I was like 11 or 12. Funny enough, right oh around the time I started smoking weed. I wonder if these things are tied together. Hair dyeing and weed are there's Maybe. a correlation. Perhaps. Um, but no, because people started telling me that my hair was dirty blonde and I was full of rage. Yeah, about it because as my Twitter handle says, I am full of rage. Um, full of oh my gosh, if you're full of rage, I should have told you to prepare some thirty second rants. That's a game we play on the show every now and then, where oh. you where you're timed. So if you think of something that really enrages you, you only hang have, on how the hockey game goes. We may have some. Uh, <laughs> do you want to check the score right now? Uh, the hockey game is starting just about now, actually. Oh, it's only st- just starting. It is. I don't uh, know. Like, dick uh, all I mean, hockey. seriously, like I'm, I'm prepared. I've got my sparkly <laughs> Sens t-shirt. You did. You wore a very rhinestone shirt. I did. I'm me. even wearing my matching Sens undies. Love it. Um, I was going to say, though. Yeah, but there's gotta, like support my fucking team. Who, the senators? Senators. Yes. The Ottawa senators. I don't know dick about hockey. I fucking love hockey. Oh, when I come when it comes to hockey, I basically have a dick. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did that with my foot for people at home. I'm glued to this coach. Cause marijuana. <laughs> there is a lightweight. Last night I smoked way too much and definitely had that moment where I was like, I that was too much, Sarah. Take it down many notches next time. <laughs> so I love it, but yeah, I can definitely get to the point where I'm too high. I that's a thing that exists. I know some people might not believe that, but I used to get exist. to that point, but that was a very long time ago when I was young. And not as exper- not as not doing it as regularly. You sweet summer child. <laughs> you were always doing it regularly. <laughs> Pretty much. That's <laughs> awesome. Like, except when I was pregnant. Oh, of course. Like, not when I was pregnant. Did, did you miss that? What did you miss most when you were pregnant? Like, did you... Were there certain things that, like, particularly got on your nerves? The, the weed. Yeah. I definitely wish the weed. Especially for, like, the paid killer properties. Right. Because, especially with Dorian. Well, I had pelvic problems with both of them. Mm-hmm. But with Dorian, my pelvis actually twisted. Uh, like the right side, like my right hip twisted forward and th- my left hip twisted back. Oh, no. And after I had him, my left side snapped back up. But uh, my right hide, my right, my right hide. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm stupid. Um, no, the right side, hide. the right side still tweaks up. Oh, shit. Yeah. I have God a chiropractor. Damn. She's great. I bet. Um, so pregnancy, getting when you're done having the baby, what's that whole process like? And like, I hate saying the weight thing, but that's a thing that happens. I never really had that problem. Oh, really? Nope. Because I was so sick the whole time with both of them, mm. I never really gained a whole lot of weight. That's true. Because I couldn't really keep anything down. Crazy. Do you remember how much <coughs> you gained? Not off the top of my head. Mm. I think with Dorian, it might have been like 40 pounds or something like that. But I mean, like most of that is like baby and fluid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, funny enough, the two of them really like similar birth stats. Really? Mm-hmm. Crazy. 
like Hunter was six pounds, six ounces. Six and six. Yep, six pounds, six ounces on June 6th. Oh, wow. And his exact date of birth, June 6th, 2010, was 66 years from D-Day. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And if you go by like the old wives tales and everything like that and based on his height and everything, he is going to be roughly six foot six when he's done growing. Whoa. Which is not hard to believe considering the fact he, that he's eight years old and he and I can share shoes. He, I, you were showing me pictures earlier and I was like, that's a preteen. He's a big boy. Yeah. He wears, he wears like a size 12. Oh my God. That's mm. insane. Yeah, he's huge. Um, But did you find, like you said that you mentioned that you had postpartum twice with both pregnancies. Yeah, with, so. with each boy. And then it stuck around after Dory. It just kind of turned itself into like a regular depressive episode. It was like, oh, right. sweet. This is like a normal thing now. Go me. <laughs> it was just, maybe it was just like triggered by the pregnancy. Well, I think, yes. I think at the second time I had postpartum depression, I really kind of more <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we think of postpartum depression. <laughs> pretty much that's 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 what the little goblins in your head sound like um but no i think after the second time i had postpartum depression and i like more recognized the signs of depression in myself right like specifically how depression manifests itself for me because i mean as you know it it's different for everyone right how does it manifest with you i get really angry uh raging robin raging robin 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 Rages. <laughs> at, I love that. At it's, Robin Rages on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Like it's name, 90% hockey. It sounds like a girl band name, like an alt rock girl. It's band. funny because my sister's nickname is Savage Shauna. Oh my God. Because she's ridiculous. She like, she literally told someone one time in the Walmart, like checkout line to go deep throat a cactus. So you, you got your family and like this whole, the, I'm not going to say your last name, but like you're a very headstrong person. No one in my family gives any fucks about anything. Love it. <laughs> so do you think it is like something that is, comes out of the family or? Uh, well, with Shauna and I, I think it's more of, we've both been through like a, a fuck of, ton of shit like yeah. we, we've we both been through a lot mm -hmm. right and like when you think about like how tragically young I was like when my father died like I was 16 when my father died right, right. think about it she's four years younger than I was than uh, I am right so I was 16 when he died she was 12. 12 that age would be terrible to deal with that holy fuck right so I mean like and then afterwards like she's been through I mean, I don't want to get into a whole mm -hmm. lot of issues because, I mean, that's her her business and mm -hmm. everything like that. I mean, like, the age she was when our dad died is kind of, like, public knowledge kind of thing. But, I mean, like, afterwards, like, she went through, she's been, girl, girl has been through some shit. Right. Right? And I think with her and I, it's both, like, we've both been through so much that we're both just, like, nope, don't give any fucks anymore. Yeah. Like, life is too short to give too many fucks. Yeah. People it are really too awful. To just give out fucks randomly, all willy nilly. Well, that's the thing, and it's not to say that you shouldn't have any fucks. You should have some, but you should you should narrow them down and only give them to people who are worth them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's something people need to learn. Like, it, it, you don't have to get rid of every single one. Just choose where they go. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. I shouldn't say that I don't have any fucks. Yeah, but I, I do kids. have exactly. I have at least two fucks. That's just like really rough. Yeah, man. I think I just honestly took it too hard. Um. Yeah, sometimes I, I love that you just called them fucks. Pretty much. <laughs> Whatever, man. I, I, I call Hunter a dirtbag on the regular. <laughs> so. How does he respond? Well, it, it's not like something I like look at him and be like, hey, you, you're a fucking dirtbag. But but you just like, jokingly say it. Just like jokingly, yeah. like if I'm like talking about him, I'm like, oh, yeah, Hunter's a dirtbag. Because like literally he could be covered head to toe in mud. Like he could be pig pen from Charlie Brown. Yeah. And he does not care. Oh, my God. Like does not even care. He's just like, where's the mud, mom? <laughs> 
Like he just keeps going. Oh man. He just he just Hunter does him. But that's a lot like you. That is. He he's yeah. like he's like a little mini me. Like he's he has he has my temper. He has my like zero fucks given kind of thing. He's super stubborn. I would not want to get on your bad side. <laughs> I do admit that. One thing he does not share with me though is a love of reading. He hates um. reading. He hates writing. That was always something that I was really into. Like I've always been into journaling like ever since I was a little girl and like I've always loved books like I brought the Hobbit to school right when I was in like the first grade because I was like legit ridiculous little Robin bringing the Hobbit to school that's so cute oh yeah man little Robin was super into books and big Robin is super into books yeah you are I I am well don't you have an English background uh no actually I don't I I was tested actually when because they wanted to skip me ahead when i was in the third grade so they tested Ooh, they, smarty pants well because the teacher like legitimately said it was because in the third grade is when you start reading like chapter books and things like that in school right or at least that's kind of how it went for me right and the teacher was like okay go home and read one chapter i read the whole fucking book <laughs> jesus christ right such a nerd <laughs> I, I couldn't even help it. <laughs> so they got me tested. And in the third grade, I had the reading and comprehension level of a sixth grader. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. But my, I, I don't math. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't math or read at no, that I'd, age. So no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't math. <laughs> math sucks. Math does suck. Though I do totally understand why, why you need it, though. I do right? run into situations where I'm like, well, that would have helped if I would have been good at that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I use math every every day. Oh yeah, that's very true. You would. Um, what would you say is like the hardest part of dealing with like motherhood and postpartum, and the lack of confidence that you might get because of that depression? Because I imagine that that it comes with that. Oh yeah, for sure. We, we talked about like the anger and stuff, but oh, like, yeah. is it kind of related? I know when I'm depressed, I don't fucking feel confident or like oh feel like no my stuff like oh no man i fucking i fucking talk a big game especially at work because you know yeah. me i'm like all like bubbly and everything like at, at, at work and everything right. so especially at work like i almost like have a persona yeah kind of thing right that yeah. i like interesting that like you kind of have to live up to and then it's that's part of my like fake it till you make it strategy kind of thing like you almost put on a mask I actually and go out and then when you come home and you like when I get home from work I'm not work Robin I'm mom Robin so I put on that mask has and it, then has it ever cracked at all so like because like from when I worked with you I can't remember cracking but very rarely interesting so you're just kind of playing all these parts pretty much and when you're in that part that's the part that you are and you just you just fucking rock it Pretty much. And if other things are going on, I basically just kind of like bottle them up and push them down until I can deal with them later. Usually I jot something down in my journal or something like that and I kind of address it later. Interesting. Oh, that's fascinating to me. So you actually consciously go, I'm going to get this out. So you're going to write it down. Mm -hmm. It's like an outlet. Yep. But... I can't, I don't have the emotional energy or time to deal with this now. So I'm going to just c- revisit this. Is that Exactly. Cool? It's like, I can't, I can't deal with this right now. I'm at work. I need to focus on work things. Yeah. What I am not at work and I could like sit down and I can unpack this. Right. Then I will, I will address this. Address this. Interesting. That's crazy. I feel like a lot of times, I think that that's a main challenge for a lot of people. Is is like because you seem to be very good at separating everything. So like there's these all these compartments, but that's hard. It is for a lot of people. That's kind it's, of a skill. It's like it's like juggling. You're you're a juggler. Yeah, I, that's that's what I, I and I feel like a lot of a lot of moms particularly oh do that. It's like that. it's like it's like every mom is like an octopus. Like we all have like our little legs that we're juggling. Like we have kids, we have husbands, we have work, we have friends. Yeah. I can't imagine. My, like one of my best friends is getting married on Saturday. Yay. That's fun. You bridesmaid? 
No, I'm not a bridesmaid. I am a guest, but I'm like rocking a Morticia Adams look because oh Morticia because Morticia and Gomez are like fucking couple goals. Uh hell yeah, they are. Do you I, see? I was gonna go as Morticia for Halloween this year and I couldn't find a dress that like like did it justice, so I couldn't do it. Well, this this is kind of like it's not really Morticia Adams, but it's basically just like it's like a slinky black dress with like Ooh. black stockings and like little black booties, and I'm gonna like rock a little black shawl. I love that. Right? So you would confident- not, not not bad for 29 plus three and having two kids. So like that's what that's what's like interesting to me. Even even just hearing you say that, like it's such this thing in our society where we're like, oh, a woman's had kids, so she must not be as confident or you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be a thing, but unfortunately it is. Um, but you seem to like, you just seem to say, fuck you (laughs) (laughs) to that. Right. And I, I tell this, I say this a lot of the time, my mission in life when I leave the door typically is to like, unless I have the kids with me. Yeah. Is for people to not look at me and be like, oh, that bitch has kids. Oh, wow. Like if I am dressed in such a way that I feel like someone's looking at me and like, wow where's that girl's kid that kind of thing I'm just like I am immediately uncomfortable like I feel like I I, like like when I go to work and everything like that like I need to be like I'm dressed to work kind of thing because maybe that helps you get into your role I get in my zone it's like you're literally like an actress Mm -hmm. who's getting into costume yep and then when you're home in your apartment you're away from people you can be the, f- you, you can just say, fuck it. I'm focusing on being a mom. And nothing else matters. I get chilling yoga pants and a sweater. Exactly. Now, who's to say that some women might have a different way to do this? No, I'm sure everyone has their own coping mechanisms. Yeah. Mine may not work for everyone. I could see me doing what you do, though, because I do truly feel like there's days where I don't feel like putting effort in. But when I do, I instantly feel better. Yep. So it's this weird thing where it's like, no, we don't have to do this. But like doing this actually is helping us like get through the day a bit. Well, and sometimes for me, it's a matter of like, okay, you need to do this for the kids. Because if you don't go to work, then you're short on your pay. And if you're short on your pay, then like that impacts your bills and everything like that. And that impacts them. The kids. Right. Right. So it's one of those like go to work and like do it for them kind of thing. Right. Oh, that's so like I have I've got pictures of them and everything like that on my desk. Like they Aww. they literally are the reason I do everything I do, except for smoke weed. They're, <laughs> they're not the reason why I smoke weed. That I do for me. But you, you yeah, you're just you're full they're your world. They really are. They're yeah. they're they're tiny pieces of my hair walking around on the outside. Aww, that's so sweet. I totally get it now. Like the fake it till you make it, like doing it for them. Does that ever is that ever hard though? All the time, every day. Yeah, every damn day. Do you ever wonder if it would be good to show them the vulnerability? Sometimes Hunter sees it. I mean, Dorian obviously is too young to see it, but Hunter is very empathic. Oh, interesting. Picks up on energies of others in the room. Oh, he he can tell. Oh really? Oh yeah, he's he's very good at reading me. Oh wow. He can always tell. Like he'll sometimes he'll just like come up to me and he'll just like randomly give me a hug and just look up look at me and be like, Mom, I love you. (laughs) I just wanted you to know that. Oh, that's adorable. Like he's the best. Oh he's such a sweetheart. Oh man. But like he he knows. Yeah. And like when I was pregnant with Dorian and I was like having a lot of like hot baths to kind of like help with my hips and everything like that. Like he would sit outside the tub next to me and he would call himself Dr. Hunter and Oh my gosh. What do you think he'll grow up to do? Honestly, based on personality. And you know, he'll do whatever he wants, but like just when you think of his personality and cuz like the way you're saying it I'm like maybe he could be like a psychiatrist or something. Or a psychologist. Honestly, I don't know what Hunter is going to be. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, his interests are so vast and, like, he changes his mind all the time. I think based on, like, what he's into right now, I think if he was going to get into anything, he would get into, like, some kind of, like, marine biology or, like, some kind of, like, marine science. Oh, that's amazing. I used to want to do that, too. Me, too. Yeah. I, I feel like 
<laughs> yeah. For for a hot minute, I was like, dolphin trainer. Before I knew about, you know, SeaWorld and how evil they are. Uh, and the fact that dolphins rape people. <laughs> what? You didn't know that? Rape people? Yes, dolphin rape is a real thing. No, what do you mean? What up, ma'am? Do- like, people or other dolphins? Fucking right, Bobby Ryan! Oh, uh, was that a goal yes. score? Mm-hmm. Do you have a notification on your phone when someone gets a goal? I do. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. It, that's a great idea, but I didn't know it existed. Not only do I get, well, I get notifications through my NHL app, um, but I oh. also have favorited the Sens Twitter, so I get a notification on my phone every time they send out a tweet. That's why. Oh, my God. I told That's you clever. Man, I'm diehard. That is very diehard. Bobby Ryan, assisted by Mark Stone, and Thomas Shabbat, a.k.a. Hot Sam Bacho. He used oh. to play for the St. John Sea Dogs. Oh, okay. He's a defenseman. His number is 72. He's smoking hot. He's a Frenchman, and I quite enjoy him, actually. Is he, he sounds like your favorite or one of. He, he, yeah, he is. He's, he's a baby, but I mean. How old? I don't know. Dolphin rape. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Shabbat. <laughs> Hang on. He's 21. Oh, my God. He's like... I mean, yeah, he's, only, he's 11 years younger than me. Fuck. I mean, that's over 20, though. I think that, that you're safe over 20. I want to see if there's... Oh, see. Okay. It's not, I, like, the best picture of him, but, like, he's a cutie. Oh, yeah, he's cute. Um, I am now seeing multiple articles about dolphin rape. I told you. It is a very real thing. What the hell? I, I'm kind of sad that I know that now. <laughs> I'm sorry that I kind of went and burst your bubble there, man. <gasps> Fuck, I had a question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so when it comes to juggling job, social life, work, momhood, like what are the things that you do for yourself that is just like this is robin time now and i don't this is describe to me oh your nails that's right you love doing nails i forgot about that i do yes that's that's kind of my thing i do my nails every single week every week every week i give myself a full manicure so like i'm huge into asmr which is this thing on youtube where it's like really soft sounds and like whispers or like like there's different things but like a visual asmr is actually like i love watching nail videos because like you watch them like do it Mm -hmm. and it's like really relaxing Mm -hmm. and meditative almost like yeah i I do like watching the nail videos oh my god it's addictive sometimes i watch them and i'm like oh my god you're putting on so much nail polish (laughs) like it pains me because i don't really do a whole lot of nail art as you can see i usually just actually this is what i have dubbed the rock star manicure because because I have huh? two accent nails, and I'll describe this for the oh right, okay, yes, for the listeners. Okay, so I have my thumb, my index finger, and my pinky are all a dark color, and then my middle finger and my ring finger are a different color. For so the rock that sign. when I flip my accent nails down, I'm throwing up the horns. There you go. So this is my rock and roll manicure. So that's your that's your you time. Yes, this you, is my once a week I do that. And I also, I'm really big into the bullet journaling. Bu- okay, <laughs> that's, what, that's is, my, what do you mean bullet? What's bullet jur- journaling? Oh, I don't even have it with me. It's in my purse, which is like. I've heard this door. phrase though. Like, it's is really it just far writing away. in the bullet journal? Kind of. Okay, so the bullet journal itself, um, the, the you know, like the, the classic bullet journal is, uh, is this, it's like dot paper kind of thing. Okay. And then you basically use it like a journal slash planner slash kind of whatever you want it to be. You can use it to keep track of things. Like I have a, I have a period tracker. I call it my shark week tracker. Oh my God. I have like a little picture of a shark there and everything. And you, I have an app on my phone. That's. This is my analog solution to a digital Analog world. period tracker. What's it called again? Shark week. Yes. It's my shark week tracker. Wow. It's like a little picture of a shark. And I have like the whole like year basically like counted out in like little pixels kind of thing. 
Oh my gosh. Basically like 12 columns Uh and then like anywhere between 28 and 31 days kind of thing and have it all blocked off. And then when I'm on my period, I like mark it out, whether I'm like spotting or if it's like a murder scene. (laughs) (laughs) And that's actually the key that I have on the pages for reals. Wow. Yeah. I like to be graphic. And and so you and do you write actual journal entries in it? Like, you know, like I used to have a live journal. Do you remember live journal? I do remember live journal. <laughs> I used to have one. I used to love doing that. Me too. Yeah, it was amazing. I love my live journal. I like the little emojis like showing your like emotion and everything that you can I'm put at sure the it end. Exists. Oh my god. I think you can still do that. I don't yeah, even know yeah, what my it would say like username and then is and then a mood yes and then sometimes your mood could be like this little like dancing emoji yeah oh it man. was good i'm gonna have to go back and oh man i don't even know in. if i know my fucking username or anything my like username that. used to be clumsy starseed because i was a big our lady peace fan at the time i did see them in concert a couple of years ago i think you were at the same one. Oh really our lady purse our lady purse our lady peace and i'm on the earth. earth it was great it was so good because edwin was there and oh yeah he looked a bit bloated but he looked good it was brilliant yeah clumsy star seed so bullet journaling nail art what about like the body confidence side of things so i, I feel out. like with you I work out yeah you've always been very body confident and owned like just owned your look. You work. How often do you work out? Um, when I'm actually following something five times a week ish. But the length really varies, right? Like it's fifteen to forty five minutes, kind of thing. Like okay. it's not like it's a doable thing to work into your day. Exactly. It's not like yeah. I'm like five times a week going to the gym for like three hours and like pump an iron or anything like that like no like I have like a little app on my phone oh, cool. this, this is like the one thing that I have an app for nice so I have a little app on my phone and then it has this like foundational fitness program kind of thing and every month I go in and depending on what day of the month it is I do whatever program it is if it says it's a rest day then I take a rest day okay cool and you find the working out like helps with like the emotional side too. Yes, it endorphins helps. are it, good. It helps me kind of like get my head on a little straight. Mm. Also, it's it's some time away from people because exactly the thing is people have to remember too is is like I mean I don't know much about your current role but like in the job that we were at like it's constant stimulation. There's a lot more gaps. That's good. Between contacts. Right. In the uh, in the role that I'm in. That's much better. Um, and it's a lot more professional interactions. Right. Because it's not so much the people as it's the administrators right. kind of right, thing. Right, 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 right. So you're not dealing directly with the difficult people. Exactly. Right. I mean, sometimes I'm dealing with the administrators on behalf of the difficult people kind of thing. Like if it's like the owner of the company kind of thing, they'll like take it to them instead of calling into customer service kind of thing. So like. Right. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's one of those like if you give them some bad news, they're more likely to be like, okay, it's written into the plan. That's fine. I'll. Yeah. I'll take it from here kind of thing, right? Like if you right. get like as as long as there's like a legitimate reason right for what's going on kind of thing or if it's something that's like stupid that you can get fixed easily kind of thing. As as long as you're reasonable with them, then they're they're really good. Oh my that's god, m- I'm totally turning into like That's much better. She's doing a lot of hand talking. You can hand talk all you want. I'm turning into a hand talker. But like yeah, but the working out would be a good escape from having people at you i guess like exactly you know whether it's work or kids you know like when you're putting on these different hats like i just can't imagine i, I know for me like, to like literally just like focus on me because yeah, i mean like when i'm working out it's like i'm literally like if i'm doing a specific move i'm like literally focusing exactly on that specific part of my body right to get it to to do what i want it to do kind of thing because i mean Anytime you're working out or anything like that, form is 
is a lot of what you do kind of thing right if you're because if you're not doing the move correctly then you're not working the right muscle groups and right sometimes you can you know cause more problems than you know you're fixing by like being active and working out kind of thing right exactly i don't i need to work out more i do think that 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 would be recommend that app has fit has fit okay I'm going to have to, like, actually, I'm actually just going to download it so that I don't forget to download it. Yes. Like H-A-S. Like heart and soul fit. Fit. Has fit. Has fit. Coach Kozak and Claudia. Woohoo, I got it. That's awesome. Um, They're they're actually a married couple. Ooh. And, uh, like, he's a personal trainer. Um, and she's more of like a nutrition kind of specialist. Oh, that's good too, though. Um, but they do all of the videos together. So like you follow him for the standard moves and then you like follow her for the easier modifications in a lot of cases. And like he's jacked and she's like this adorable little motivator kind of thing. But they're both like really funny and they bounce off of each other really well. I love that. That's adorable. Good for them. It's really good. And they like motivate you and they're just like, you know what? Remember why you showed up today? Like, use that as your drive to get through kind of thing. Like, you are stronger than the burn. Oh, my God. You're That's, laughing everybody who's that, on though. the couch. I do need that. He's like, if being fit was easy, everybody would everybody would be fit, but they're not. <laughs> like That's he's, true. He's pretty savage in some cases, but I mean, I, I really enjoy it because he's also, like, super happy when he says it, too. Oh, Wow pumps you up do you do your workouts in the morning or uh sometimes i do them in the morning sometimes i do them in the afternoon it kind of really depends on how my day is structured and like what time i went to bed the night before kind of thing so you mentioned rage what are you ragey about i get ragey when i can't control things Ooh, that would be a big one because i'm like Some would say that I am a control freak. (laughs) She's a super freak. Super control freak. Yeah, pretty much. uh, (laughs) Some would also say that I have severe OCD. Ooh, do you really? Well, I'm I'm very particular about some things. Like as far as like laundry folding, like God help the person that folds my laundry the wrong way. Oh, really? Oh, my God. I will slit their throat and then kick their ass for bleeding on my floor. <laughs> oh, my God. So, the little so have people squares. in your life told you that you were OCD? Oh, yes. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> and, like, I put my pots away a very specific way in my kitchen. And, like, if you mess up the way my pots are, I will. <laughs> I have lost my shit in the past. Really? Yes. But you are, you're a very organized person, so this all makes kind of sense to me. Yeah. 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 Holy shit. So, OCD control freak. Um, I forget where my original question was. Why do I get angry? Oh yeah, anything else? <laughs> um, it's got to go deeper than laundry folding. I'm sure it does go deeper than laundry folding in some cases, but I mean, in a lot of cases, it's just like when I when I don't have control of a situation, like if if there's nothing you can do about something. Yeah. Exactly. Like in a lot of cases, and I hate to admit this because I, I I do yell at my kids. Yeah, straight up, especially Hunter. Right. Because the child is stubborn. Just like his mom. Just like his mama. And I'll be like, Hunter, go get your shoes on. And he's like, no. I'm like, Hunter, go get your shoes on, please. And he's like, no, mom, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, wow. Right? And he's... The sass. Right? He's eight years old. He's like... Four foot eight or four foot nine or something like that. He weighs 75 pounds. Like he's a big kid. Right. So I can't really do a whole lot. Right. To him. Right. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly a big person. No. For those of you who don't know, I'm like five foot four. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm shorter than you. Like a buck 30, maybe. <laughs> like I'm a pretty small person. Right. Right. There's there's not a whole lot I can do with him. It's crazy to me that like that you have anger because like you seem so cool and collected. Nope. But this is part of the fake it till you make it. I'm full of anger. 
It's a lot of internalizing, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I also... I feel like you need to do more than paint nails, girl. <laughs> go to the rage room. Oh, my you God. Been, I you would need to go. to go to the rage room. You really so do need to go. No. Well, I also, like, I didn't have a good relationship, like, with my mother. That's right. I Growing that. up, like, yeah. she was emotionally and physically abusive. Right. So I still have, like, kind of, like, pent-up rage from that. And then sometimes I feel like when I'm getting angry at Hunter... Because oh. I'm out of control, I feel like I'm basically just like carrying on that like that cycle of abuse kind of thing. Holy shit! Well, that would do it. So you feel guilty about getting angry? Yeah. Even though your anger might be totally legit and valid and exactly totally normal. Exactly. So then I get angry, and then I'm guilty for getting angry. Oh, the endless cycle of guilt is so real. And so then the depression is just like, well, you're a shitty fucking mom, aren't you? So then how, so you've, so you had the postpartum twice. Mm -hmm. What helped you, are you doing better now? Well, I'm medicated now. So you were, you, the medication really helped, eh? My, I've increased my dosage twice. Wow. So I went 10 to 20, now I'm on 30. And it seems to be kind of balancing out-ish. Right. But it's one of those things that like, things need to like almost be perfect for things to kind of be on an even keel like it's like right. I need to be taking my meds every day I need to be making sure that I'm working out like on a yeah. regular basis I need to make sure that I'm eating properly that I'm drinking enough water like I have like literally like I can show you in my in my bullet journal I literally have like a checklist of oh. things that I like I have like my daily habits that I should be doing kind of thing and like some of them are like ridiculous Ooh, Ooh, another, another goal! goal! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Ooh, Max Lajoie, rookie, wrist shot, assisted by Ryan Dezingle and Mikhail Bodker. These names are Ooh. so, like, over my head. I just don't even know. I love it. Ooh, do you want to see the replay on that first goal? I'll see it, but, I mean, I can't say I'll know what's going on. It's lovely. <laughs> Into the net. To me, it just looks like a normal goal. I didn't even see it yet. You saw it before <laughs> me. I do love that sound, though. Yeah, you should see her face when it comes through on her phone. It's like Pavlov's bell. So you literally have a, a daily checklist to keep you on track. Yes. Like, a, like literally like a daily checklist of like, because I'm kind of like my environment needs to be clean and tidy and everything and organized as well so I have like a list of like things that I need to do like as far as housework uh, okay. every day every single I, day and it's the same day every day pretty much I mean like wow. some, th some things I don't do every day like laundry I don't do like every single day I mean I do laundry most days right especially with cloth diapers but yeah I don't do laundry every day but some like there's little things on there like dishes make the bed do the kitty litter pick up so sweep I sweep kind of thing like little things kind yeah. of thing that I like I find it helpful yeah to keep track of kind of thing because it's one of those things like the more things that I can check off kind of thing like the it, better I feel and it probably becomes kind of like a little bit of a game like kind of it's like a reward system and everything's all color coded so it's like how many little color boxes I can I get I really want to do this it seems like a really good idea it's excellent because once you get, as long as you, you just would have to get in the habit of. I need to get my book and doing show you this. I, I would like to see it because now I'm kind of feeling inspired a little bit. You actually have it in your purse. Damn. I am very inspired. Okay. So it's like literally just like, okay, so this is what it looks like when it's blank. Okay. So it's literally, oh, okay. There's just little dots. It's just little dots, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is my spread that I have oh my like every gosh. week. So like literally, so like this is my monthly calendar. So this is kind of like so I can figure out like where I am in the month kind of thing. And then I haven't written down any goals for the month or anything like that. But any events that I have going on, like my best friend and her man are getting married on Saturday. So I've got that written in there and like. 
It says intoxicated 7 p.m. Woo, 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 on Sunday. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? And then see, like, I have my little chart that I do. Okay. So can I read off what it is? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Like, so, literally, please don't judge. Like, some of these things are, like, fucking ridiculous. No, I love this. No, no, no. You're in, you're in, you're inspiring me. So it says, I'm writing. I'm lighting another joint. It says laundry, dishes, sweep, kitty litter, make beds, pick up. You know what? Realistic daily chores. Do you know what I mean? Like, those are fucking realistic things that people could do. Right? It's not so bad. Don't yell. <laughs> Sorry. That's like a legitimate a goal big... of mine every day is like legitimately is like not to yell. Do like not it's... yell. And do you check these off? Okay. So that's this week. So I haven't filled out anything. Uh, that's, these are my notes from therapy. Uh, Ooh. I so every month I do a monthly calendar and I like write my work like like my work schedule oh. and like future appointments and everything like that it's I all color coded that's so much and then I have monthly goals monthly goals follow fitness plans stick to budget 10 plus hours of overtime per week yeah man gotta Get make that, that money coin. right Ooh. right so like you Ooh. can see like I write things in here like little thoughts my work schedule like I fill in like what I've done as you can see this week I was not super good I was on vacation I was lazy no 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 but okay so we have yeah don't yell hydrate I haven't been very good at drinking water eat three times I don't eat very much me neither I eat like on standard two meals a day which I eat usually like legit I eat once a day on average fitness uh up by 6 30 a.m damn girl that seems painful. That's usually but you sleeping kids, in. So it must be, but that's the what I always hear too. Like, yeah. like as soon as you have kids, yeah, up by six thirty in bed by eleven. That's later than I thought, actually. Me- Ooh, oh, I, oh, I initially thought that said meditate, but it says medicate. Yeah, medicate. I gotta make sure that I'm taking my meds. Take the meds. Um, shower and brush and floss. You know. Solid list. Solid list. Don't know where masturbation would fall on this or sex, but it should be on there. Uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're not, okay. We Mas- won't get into that, but it is important to do that too. You can count masturbation every time there's a shower listed there. Ooh. <laughs> is that when you do it? It's my personal favorite time to do it, yes. In the shower, really? Yeah, in the shower head. Oh, the shower head. I I don't have a removable one. No, neither do I. Wait, what do you mean? You, like, lay in the back of the shower. You, like, tilt your shower head so, like, you get the right angle. And then you just, like, move your hips a little bit. Huh. Mm Mm-hmm. It does pretty much the exact same thing as the removable shower head, only you're, like, laid back and you don't have to worry about like holding an awkward shower head because the shower head's still up there and it's doing all the work for you interesting i'll have to try that i don't know if that's i've ever let's go on my list now <laughs> i want to get a bullet journal now it's doing robin i feel like i'm <laughs> i feel like i'm the typical girl who gets like inspired by these like organizational fads and then i just never keep up with it right and then this is like more other things like affirmation Ooh. You, do you do affirmations like how do you do them well i just like I'll, honestly a lot of times it's like i find it on pinterest or like this top one here is something that like a friend sent me is there anything she can't handle hmm damn i feel like it helps too that you have really nice handwriting thank you like i feel like my bullet journaling would not be as cool as yours Honestly, a lot of it is the fact that the dots make it really easy so you could space everything. Yeah. That's like 50%. And you could honestly, like when I started it, I didn't always have this layout, right? Like I, it started. I like that layout a lot. I do too. Um, It started. This it's was simple. In, like this was my initial month and this was my habit tracker. Oh my God. Right? So. You were wild. Right. And then this like I oh did like a, week and a couple of other things. And then I had a weekly log and then separate daily logs. Right. And then it, I found it was just getting to be a lot to do. There's my shark. Oh, tracker. my God. I haven't filled it out this month yet. But there's my there's my happy little shark. You are so funny. Like cleaning oh, schedule. Hell. You even have a cleaning schedule in here. I, 
As you can see, I have not been filling this out. Wipe ceiling. Like, but this is stuff that like we all know we need to do it. Mm-hmm. So why not do something to motivate us to get that shit done? You know what I mean? Like Right? Like I have like a little build tracker. Right? So like over time it kind of evolved into because before I used to do like little like little check blocks when I did like little things. Things right. And then I started putting like my daily stuff up top there. And tracking a bunch of stuff. And then I slowly I added things into the tracker. And then eventually I decided. Yeah, in June I switched to this layout. Which is really like for um, the people at home. For the people at home, it's essentially like one page is like a grid of a week, and then it kind of flows over to the Saturdays next page. on the second page, and, and then goals. At, and at the top, it has like kind of a chart of like daily chores, and then in the very corner, you see like a calendar view of the whole month, and she has highlighted the week that she is on. Uh. And you can see even this layout has changed, like since I started it in June. And then July, like, see, I added things into it. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Fuck. Right? But, like, the second week I did it, like, when I fi- when I added my, uh, when I added my, when I took my monthly tracker in July and I didn't put it in the monthly bit and I put all of those things that I was tracking on the monthly tracker into, like, my weekly spread because I found I was doing a lot of flipping back and forth kind of thing. Right. So then I decided it was like, what if I put that on this like daily, weekly hybrid spread that I came up with? I love that idea. And uh, and then this is this is what I came up with. And I mean. And you actually write in the weeks like a journal. Yeah. So like just what happened that day. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I want to do it again. That's such. And it and I also like it, too, because it's like just forces like you're literally making bullet points of your life. That's literally why it's called a bullet journal. journal. And it's also like a day planner. You know what I mean? So like at the beginning of the year, like at the beginning of the journal, you can actually see like I have the whole year for 2018 planned out kind of thing. So I can plan and I've updated this kind of thing. So like future months. So like the month that I'm in now, I'll update that on like my big monthly calendar kind of thing. But for things in future months... I'll update it here in the beginning. And then when I get to that month, then I add all of those appointments in. Okay, this is madness. I feel like you have your shit together way more than you think you do. No. I feel like looking at this bullet journal proves that you have your shit together way more. If you had any idea how much I get fucking mocked for that bullet journal... Why would you get mocked for it? It's so inspirational. Apparently it's a waste of time, man. No way. When do you do like when do you typically write in it? Whenever you can? Usually at home. Okay. I usually try to do it so I do like my weekly spread at some point on Sunday. And uh kind of like plan my week per se, like mentally prepare yeah. for the the coming shenanigans. I think that that's so helpful, though. Like, because I think, especially if you're someone whose life involves multiple parts, like yours does. Right? And especially, like, knowing, like, this day I have this appointment, and this day I have this appointment, and this day there's this appointment. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... (coughs) It's hard to remember all that. I mean, you can put it... It is. Especially, Hunter is a very high-maintenance kid. Yeah. He's a lot, to, a lot to deal with, eh? Well, I mean, he's with the the cleft lip and everything like that. True. And there's so there's been that since he was born, and then there's a somewhat recent uh, ADHD diagnosis, and we've also been referred to the autism team. Oh no! So uh, and he's he's kind of he's behind in school in a couple of subjects, oh, and he's. Shit. Uh, uh. He gets seen by a pediatrician in developmental pediatrics in the neurological clinic. So whoa, yeah, man, a lot. That's a lot. Hunter is my challenge. So I can totally tell why you'd almost you kind of have to fake it 
Especially if he's dealing with all that stuff, too. Yep. And Damn. Dorian has a speech delay. He's getting a lot better now. A speech delay? A speech delay. Huh. For the longest time, he didn't talk. And actually, now he does talk. But he uh, he has like these like William Shatner, Captain Kirk-esque dramatic pauses between words. It's fucking adorable. Whoa. Huh. Like, Crazy. like if his brother like hurts him or something like that, he'll be like, brother, hurt me. <laughs> and he never calls so Hunter. So dramatic. And he never calls Hunter by his name. He always calls him bit brother. Oh my gosh. I just want to point out what I'm looking at right here. Is this gratitude that by is, the month? Uh, that is actually just for the month of January. If you can see, it's like numbered all yeah. around the circle. So every single day I went in and I like wrote something that I was great, like some small thing that I was grateful for. Each that day. day. Each day. And it's just one little thing. Just one little thing. Holy shit. That is so cool. I'm like, absolutely. Like I need to do what you're doing here. Because it's, oh man, I am, and, and do you do this on every month? Uh, I haven't done the gratitude log in a few months, actually. Get back on your gratitude, girl. So you mentioned therapy. Do you find therapy helpful? Like Yes. Yeah. Do you do it regularly? Uh, fairly regularly. Yeah. That's good. I see her, actually, I saw her on Thursday, and I see her again uh, in two weeks. Ooh. See, I even have, see, my journal is blue. For the record, these come in like 15 different colors. Where can you get them? Chapters. Really? Yes. They're the, <sighs> hold on. I want one. There's like a crazy German name for them. They're the Luke Term 1917 journals. Are they pricey? Uh, I think they're like 15 bucks or something. Okay, that's like not that. too bad. Like they're not. I want to do that and I want to get some cool pens and just do it. Yeah, I like literally went to Staples and just like bought a bunch of colored pens. Oh my gosh. I'm so fucking And then I inspired. went to the dollar store and I bought an adorable pencil case. Look at this laugh crying pineapple. This is like oh! me. It's like me in an emoji. Oh my God. That should be the promo image for this episode. The laugh crying pineapple. I can make that happen. He's amazing. He's my favorite. I love that. So, what? Well, okay. So, I, I thought we could play a game. Did you think of any two truths and a lie? I thought of a few. Okay. I I have I have um, three I have three sets on my end. Oh my gosh. Okay. But like, we can take some time and think. I actually have to finish one because I have everything except one. Let's see here. Um. Okay. I have mine. Okay, I did. I wasn't that organized, and I did write my down. They're like that's okay. You can. It's editing. It's editing. So we're gonna play two truths and a lie. So we know each other like fairly well, but not like crazy well. Mm -hmm. So this will be interesting. So you're gonna say two things that are correct and one lie, and I need to deduce based on how I know you and what I know about you, which one is the lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. Okay. Sometimes I, in the past I've fucked this up and I've done like two lies and a truth. <laughs> so if you say all your facts and then you realize it's something else, just let just tell me what it is. <laughs> okay. Um. I am an honorary member of the all-girl band, the Pussycat Dolls. Two. The real all girl band, the Pussycat the Dolls. The real all girl band, the Pussycat Dolls. I am an honorary member. That is fact number one. Okay. Fact number two. I technically speaking have three moms and three dads. Fact number three. I love the Rolling Stones. I technically have three moms and three dads. Not all. T like when you say technically, do you mean biologically? No, I mean like by marriage and shit okay. like that. Um, I'm gonna go with the Pussycat Dolls a lie because I don't know if there really is a band. I know that there's a movie, but I don't know if there really is a real band called the Pussycat Dolls. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think that that is the lie. Oh what? There is a band. 
How are you an honorary member of it? <laughs> oh, no. Ha! Sorry, wrong. I, it, it turned I did, into two I, lies and a truth. It did. I, I technically, I meant the, the, the all girl band Girlicious. That, that is the, that is the <gasps> band that I am an honorary <laughs> member of. My bad. Wait, so are you? I am. Yes. That is How does that type. work? Girlicious? Girlicious. Yes. I remember them. Didn't they have one, like one hit? Yeah, pretty much. How do you become an honorary member of Girlicious? So back in the days of Z103 and oh the Summer Rush concert. Oh my gosh. I worked at the hotel that was like the host hotel for all of the acts. So I got to like meet a bunch of them kind of thing, including the Beebs, who was an annoying brat. You met him? He was an annoying brat and I wanted to punch him in the face. He seems like he would be. Yeah, he was annoying. But no. One of the members of Girlicious, she was ready way earlier than the other two. And she was just like, can I like hang out here or something like that? She's just like, I don't want to hang out in my room by myself. I'm kind of bored. And the manager on duty was like, sure, you can hang out back here with Robin. Oh, my gosh. So I like got to hang out with her for a bit. And she was like, you are so fucking cool. She's like, you are an honorary member. <gasps> so you. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is a legit way to become an honorary member. Yes, that is. The the lie in that was actually that I love the Rolling Stones. I hate the Rolling Stones. OK, explain the three. Bo- Can you explain the three three moms? OK, give the flow so- chart. Okay, Done you, diagram. You, you almost need, yeah, you almost need like a fucking picture. So my dad was married three times. Oh, wow. So daddy was married three times. Once to my maternal unit. Mm-hmm. Once to the lady who I refer to as mom. And then okay. once to the lady, mom number three. The new, So like the second wife of his. Yes, she's my pretty mom. Pretty much raised you, right? Yes, she did. She's my mom. Wow, and then but are but they're no longer together. No, are they on good terms? Uh, well, he died when I was sixteen. Oh, that's right. Fuck. So he died three days after he buried Bob Number Three. Mm. So there's holy shit. Three days after. Three days after. So there's one dad, three moms, and then <clears throat> this mom remarries again. These guys are my parents. <laughs> These oh my are the God. ones that take the kids. Yeah. And then the uh, the maternal unit. Right. Who I don't talk to. She she has a new spouse. So technically I have three moms and three dads. Oh my god. 3 days after. 3 days after. That so is sleep apnea is no joke folks. Is that a, is that how he dies? Sleep <laughs> apnea? Shut up. It was a combination of a heart attack and sleep apnea. Yes. Oh and my god. And he didn't god. have a, he didn't have a CPAP. Get your CPAPs if you get your sleep apnea. It's real, yo. Seriously, get that shit checked out. I feel like that's one of those things that like people just don't take seriously. I agree. And they should. I agree. Damn. Yeah. You do have some doozies. Mine are really fucking lame. So here's my first one. And a lot of these have to do with high school, Sarah. So I guess I can't wait. this is going to... Okay. So the first one is... I took horseback riding for two years in junior high. I taught Sunday school throughout high school. And I coached soccer in high school. I do not believe that you coached soccer. I did coach soccer. Oh. So the truths were horseback riding and coaching soccer. The lie was Sunday school. You thought I could teach (laughs) Sunday school, Robin? What the fuck? I thought that would have been an easy one. (laughs) I am obviously really I was the stoned. first in my family to stop going to church. We grew up strict Catholic, and I was like, fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm done. So, like, if I was ever in Sunday school, I was probably doing my own version of bullet journaling during it because I didn't get my shit. Peace out, Jesus. Peace out, Jesus. Do you got another one? Do you got another set? Okay, hold on. Let me think. I'm excited. Okay. Wild. I got to come up with some cool, like, I got to, like, I got to think here. The true ones are easy. Once you figure out the truth, you can kind of, it kind of guides the lie in a weird way. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. My husband and I, okay, sorry, fact one. My husband and I lived down this, like, down the road from each other twice before we started dating. Okay. Fact number two. My sister and I 
um, both of our father-in-law's birthday is the same day as our father's. All three of them were born on July 17th. That seems wild. But keep going. And fact number three, I have always been a fan of the Ottawa Senators. See, I feel like that one is too obvious that like maybe it is the lie because that seems one, like it would 100% be true, but I feel like you're smart and you wouldn't put that in there to be so easy on me. The birthday thing seems ridiculous, but like, I guess could be a possible. What was the first one again? Oh, the first one was you lived down the street from your now husband two different times? Two different times. Two different times. Before so, like, we actually different- like started dating. So, like, different houses on the same street? Uh, different. So, one time it was different apartment buildings on the same street. And then the other time it was, uh, like, different streets. But it was, like, my street was, like, a cul-de-sac off of his street. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I think that one would be true. That, yeah, I pretty much gave that one away. That one's that one's true. Because you explained it really well. I think if you were making it up. So then what's well, between those other two? Okay, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna trust my instinct and say that the third one is a lie. You are absolutely correct. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you didn't always like them? No, I didn't. For a while when I was younger, I uh I liked the Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> so gross. Um, but no, yeah. When I when I was younger, I uh, I used I, I cheered for the Habs for a little bit, and then uh, I saw a picture of Alexi Yashin on a craft dinner box, and from that moment on, I was hooked on the other. Wow! Sundays. I knew that that had to be that was too obvious to be the truth lie that's interesting though that's yeah. hilarious yep alexi ashen on a craft dinner box go sense go damn <laughs> so these are these are kind of lame so my my next three are that i can't burp voluntarily um i've never had my wisdom teeth removed and i am allergic to shellfish They're kind of lame. I don't have as cool of a life as you. <laughs> no, well, it's cool. I don't want you to have a life that's one unspeakable <laughs> tragedy after another. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Although, not I'm not saying my kids are unspeakable tragedies. But right. <laughs> that sounded really bad. <laughs> um, what was the first one again? Uh, that I can't burp voluntarily. Like, if someone was like, burp now, I can't do that. Oh. Yeah, I can't do that either. You can't? No. Mm, okay. I'm not going to react in any way because you're to guess. I'm going to say that is your lie then. You think that's the lie? I'm going to say that's your lie based on your non-reaction. Well, okay. That's 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 one of the true ones. I didn't react because I didn't want you to, I didn't want to give it away one way or the other. Um, the lie is the shellfish thing. So I do still have my wisdom teeth. I've been told to get them removed every time I go to the dentist. And I just say, no. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Do you got more? Uh, Think of one more. Okay. I thought of one crazy. Because I got to. You know, I gotta, I gotta keep up my, you know, appearances. Well, this is the end of the episode, so okay. Whoever hears this are the true troopers. This is so hard. I can actually do mine. I have, I have three more. Okay, ready? You do it, and then I will, like, I will think yeah. of my. my so, last thing. um, I was once triple cheated on. I was once engaged to one out of two serious boyfriends. And I once drove all the way to Windsor, Ontario. That is the lie. Windsor, Ontario? Yes. So I might have phrased that wrong. I did drive to Windsor, Ontario. I was not the one driving, but I was in the car. Oh. So I probably should have rephrased that. Okay. Because you probably don't think I have a car. In that case, I'm going to say yeah. the uh, the engagement. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what gave it away that I've never been in Canada? <laughs> Only because I know you, Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was engaged, you would have known. Um, yeah, it was one triple cheated on. The guy cheated on me with someone else and then cheated on her with somebody else. So it was like a three. It was like, oh man, it was a fucked up situation. That is really fucked up. Triple situation. cheated. Um, yeah, in Windsor, Ontario, that was like under, like just under 24 hours of straight driving. Wow. Insanity. I'll never do it again. <laughs> wow. Fly for the love of God. I'm sure you have at least one crazy one. Yeah. The, see, sometimes thinking of the lie is the harder part. Is the harder part. Yeah. The truths come easy. Right? Because it has to be something that's like believable, but also... But also, yeah. Yeah, like not believable too. Uns- uns- unsuspecting. Mm-hmm. Almost. Yes, exactly. Oh my God. It probably doesn't help that we've been smoking all night. Yeah, no. Okay. So... Yes. Fact one. Okay. My children are not named after anyone at all in any way, shape, or form. Fact number two. My ex-boyfriend, Joshua, died of cancer on my 24th birthday. Fact number three. (coughs) Don't die. Uh... (laughs) I'm dying. I can't even remember what I gave for my first fact. It was um that oh. your kids aren't named after anyone. Kids are not named and after anyone. And then the anyone. ex-boyfriend dying. Okay, Josh dying on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Fact number three. Adrian is the fourth ginger that I have ever dated. Hmm. I don't believe the kids won because you're too dorky to have them not named after somebody. That That's is- a good thing. That is true. Um, so that is a truth one. No, that's you're you're absolutely correct. That right. is the lie. They they are named after someone. Oh, oh. Okay. Wait. You said they're not named after anybody. Exactly. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah, that's the lie. Yes, that is the lie. Yeah. Yeah. They are named after someone. Ooh, who are they named after? Uh so Hunter's middle name, Anthony, is after my dad, because when my dad was born. His name was Stephen Anthony, and then like whatever his biological last name was, I think it was like Swoboda or something like that. Mm. And then when he was adopted, they changed his name to Robert Anthony. So they liked the Anthony, they kept the Anthony. That's perfect. So Hunter Anthony. Love that. And then Hunter's a great name. It is. As soon as I got pregnant, I like had a dream and I was like, if I have a boy, his name will be Hunter. Whoa, that's wild. Mm Mm-hmm. And then with Dorian, his middle name is Hugh, and that is after Adrian's grandfather, who fought in World War II. Oh. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he was an Air Force uh, pilot, and uh, he was a major, or uh, sorry, a brigadier general before he uh, he ended up retiring. He just Holy passed shit. away this past, uh, this past February. Holy fuck. Well, I, I knew, yeah, there's no way. I was like, there's no way they're not named after somebody. Yes, that that was the lie. Yeah. Lots of gingers, eh? Yeah, lots of gingers. <laughs> <laughs> I love the gin. You love the gin. I can't help it, ma'am. Any closing thoughts on confidence and life and handling it all? Other than the oh, the bullet journal. I'm just still blown away by it. I wanna I I'm literally gonna get one tomorrow. Seriously? Just search the words bullet journal on Pinterest and just like dive down the rabbit hole. Dive down the friggin' rabbit hole. It's beautiful. Yeah. If you want, you can check out my Pinterest board for bullet journals. I have a whole bunch of cool shit saved there. Please send it to me. Who's to say I will ever actually do this or keep up with it? I'm very prone to saying I'm going to do something and then going and getting all the stuff and then it just sits and I don't do it. That's the fun thing with bullet journaling is the fact that you can, you know, do it or you can not do it. And if you don't do it, then you don't do it. And there's, it's not like it's like a, like a regular day planner where like time yeah. marches on and you keep having blank pages kind of thing. If in a bullet journal, if you don't do it for a week or something like that, you're really the only one who's missing out on anything. 
That's so true. There's no pressure. Exactly. And it's really just a, you just got to buy a journal and pens. It's nothing crazy. Exactly. It's a little journal. It's a little pencil case. I carry it around in my gigantic mom bag. Oh, I want to be more like Robin. Oh my God. No one ever says that. No, I think you're fucking great. And you need to give yourself more credit. And you kick an ass. You're the best juggler that ever was. I do my best. <laughs> That's a great way to say it. I do my. I say that all the time. What like when someone's like giving me hell for something, I'm like I'm doing my best. We're all doing our best here, pretty much. We're all only human. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Nobody's perfect, yo. Well, I was at McDonald's last night, and like I just saw, like the like it was or it was last night. No, it was uh Saturday night. Wait, what day is it today? I don't even know. It's Sunday. So yeah, Friday night I was there. So not last night, but the, the night before. And it was like during like the drunk hour where they were being bombarded with people. Oh, and like yeah. a bunch of drunk people were like yelling at them. And I, I just piped up being like, they're doing their best. Because <laughs> they are. It's true. And I don't like, I really judge people on how they uh, treat fast food workers. I agree. I feel like that's like a good judge of character. Like if you're bad to like wait staff or someone in a like fuck a fa- yeah. like in a fast food restaurant, like yeah. y- you can like go fuck yourself. Go deep throat a cactus. I love that. Go deep. Th- I'm, I need to use that. Go deep. Well, there's one thing I do want to bring up maybe before we close up the episode. And the reason I want to put it at the end is because I, I don't want to give this situation like... I don't know how to say it. More energy than what it deserves. But like I, I showed you today the pictures, like the screenshots of the messages I got. Oh, yeah. The mm-mm. Yeah. No. And it just made me think like <clears throat> it must be really unfortunate and sad to have a life where like you feel the need to do that to feel better about yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It took me a while to get there today, but I got to the point where I was just like, wow, what a sad individual. I essentially, I'll, I'll do an audio diary about it, but I got like messages calling me ugly from like a random guy that I don't know. Uh, it's probably a fake account, I'm thinking. Um, like, so maybe it is someone I know that made a fake account, but holy fuck. Um, like went out of his way to message the podcast like Facebook page so he messaged me on my personal one and then messaged me on the podcast Facebook anyways regardless like situation's done and over with but like yeah I'm just I really hope uh he feels better about life at some point and stops doing that because it's real fucked up (laughs) that is really he needs to he needs to have a smoke yeah he needs to chill the fuck out he needs to get over this toxic masculinity bullshit like I I will go all fucking like Ramsey Bolton on his ass and yeah fucking, like, I got a lot of passionate responses from friends and that that made me feel a little bit better but like go all like mountain on his ass go mountain still to this day I can't get over that that was absolutely wild <laughs> but yeah no, I guess I guess it's just for me it's just like it would be easy for me to go negative and instead I'm just like you know what at least I'm not as fucked up as this person. Yes. Uh, Just know that you are beautiful inside and out. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck the haters. Fuck the haters. So says Robin. Yes. Robin rages. I love that. Mm-hmm. But thanks so much for coming on. Oh, no worries. Stick around and hang out and smoke some more if you'd like. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And you get to ring the bell to close it out. <gasps> so ring that bell. Woo-hoo. Talks to